Good morning, fellow privateers. Welcome to the Week Ahead Outlook from Privateer FX. This is my second go around. The first one, there was something wrong with my mic, so I'm going to go do it again. Um, and I got to keep this short and sweet today because I've got to get to an airport. Um, I'm happy to say that my Green Bay Packers just beat my the hometown Chicago Bears. Um, today, which makes me very happy. Uh, anyhow, so we'll get to the charts in a minute. Data ahead. A lot of uh, market PMI data out of Europe. That starts tomorrow. Um, out of the U.S., that's tomorrow. And I'm going to scroll down. This is from our friends at Forex Live, their, their handy calendar. Uh, we, we do have a, a lot of data. We've got jobs numbers out of the UK. We've got, uh, I think we have CPI, we have retail sales, we have GDP. Um, you know, I'm just going to kind of scroll down or you can take a look at it yourself. ECB is Lagarde and the new president Lagarde speaks on Wednesday. And then we have German IFO. Germany um, came out on Friday. It was, uh, Ren was speaking and the euro got sold on, um, Redden is raising hopes for a September policy package. Uh, you know, so this is a fiscal package. It was out of the Wall Street Journal. Um, a lot of these central bankers are realizing that negative rates and QE has kind of run its course and it's now time for fiscal stimulus. And you're going to see that. Um, we're going to see that out of Europe. Germany's going to need it. I think this data this week might not be great out of Germany and um, we're, we're definitely concerned you can you can tell you, you saw it first out of New Zealand with the RBNZ talking two weeks ago uh, basically saying listen interest rates are super low we can borrow for nothing and we can put together a fiscal stimulus plan build infrastructure add jobs. Um, and that's a theme that we're going to see more of in 2020. There's no doubt about it. And it might be the only thing that saves the world from a, from a global recession is if they start to implement, um, some of these fiscal plans. Um, excuse me. Um, what else do we have? Yeah, so a lot of a lot of UK data. We got we got data out of um, we just got a lot of a lot of GDP data. We got the Bank of Japan, um, which I don't think we're expecting anything really out of that. Um, and then we have Bank of England, so nothing is expected there. Um, you know, we we we've kind of checked the two boxes that had paralyzed the market for a long time especially in FX with the China U S phase one, I'd like to call it a skinny deal. Still very, there aren't a lot of details on this. I'm not super optimistic that it's going to be a huge game changer and full risk on type, um, event. Um, the Boris Johnson resounding victory, um, you know, helped push the, British pound up and the FTSE up and the Euro up and he's definitely on track for a, an exit, a Brexit at the end of January, which is the new deadline. So that's happening. Um, I, I just don't see any reason why it wouldn't at this point. We want to get these things off of people's radars. We want the market to start trading for fundamental reasons and not be hamstrung by some of this, you know, trade stuff, the political um, paralysis that has been going on now forever. You can see Friday, uh, we've got more data coming out of the UK. Big, big week for the UK. Anyhow, so let's get to the charts. Speaking of the UK, why don't we take a look at the British pound? There's a weekly. Ran up, obviously, right after Bojo, right after the news. You can see the daily. We gave back about half 
of the day's pop. So I think we were 131.70, uh, 60 or something. Went up to 135. I mean, it's way overdone. So anyone that had positions on, um, especially like long gamma positions that had deltas to sell, they probably did pretty well selling it on the 134 handle. Even you know, even if you didn't top ticket, that worked out pretty well. But this is a theme that I'll talk about the rest of the video is we're concerned about we've been bearish dollars now for a while and it, it's worked well. We expressed it via the British pound. We got in below 130 and now I'm just wondering if, you know, it's kind of a sell the fact and we're, we're heading into year end. Um, the Euro is the same, same look at trade. There's the weekly and you can see there's going to be a tail. And there was a pretty big, almost a bearish engulfing. Um, it almost closed below Thursday's low. So that's kind of ugly. And, you know, that I think has something to do with the, the Ren comments about the fiscal stimulus. Um, we don't think it's time to be short dollars. There could be a dollar rally into year end, and then maybe the short dollar theme. Um, comes back into play in January. I do think it's a, a lot. Uh, there's a lot of banks out there saying that that's one of their favorites. So it's definitely the risk reward on trying to be short of dollars is, is not great right now because because of bars like this. I mean, just look at this euro bar. Um, take a look at dollar Swissy. Let's see what that daily looks like. I actually still closed down on the day. From euros was selling but um again these have had big moves you know we've gone from above one down to 98 pretty much in you know a couple weeks times a couple weeks time aussie and kiwi are interesting to me these two are telling me i'm sure we're, we're short we sold aussie on we sold aussie basically after that uh the pop in in asia um Kiwi had a huge week two weeks ago on the fiscal news. And then this is another daily bar telling me not to be short of dollars, in this case, long Kiwi. It's just, um, it is a, uh, the risk reward is horrible on that. So, see it here in the currencies you know are we a sell the fact in stocks now that the china u.s trade uh, phase one is done i don't know i mean this is still bullish i mean that we had a little reversal day here but that's because it gapped open um and if you look at the weeklies they're still um they still look pretty good um you know, it's a new high weekly close. And it is going to... NASDAQ is actually going to look even better, I think. New high weekly close in NASDAQ. And that's after that. Look at this red, this kind of hanging man doji type bar um, from two weeks ago. I would have thought we'd see some selling pressure. It barely came off at all last week. Stocks are just permabit. Um, so risk on still probably in the year end. And then I think you can sell it in January dollar yen had a doji type day on Friday, but that also, <coughs> pardon me, also had a huge up day on Thursday. Um, so I think the, um, and that was after acting really heavy during the, the risk melt up, like stocks are rallying really hard and things like dollar yen were not. So there was some big disconnect there. Take a look at Euro, uh, Euro yen. That's an ugly looking bar. So again, we're looking at tactical dollar longs after everyone and their mother has been short dollars now for a while. Um, Tacti so tactical dollar longs and uh, 
you know, maybe looking for a little bit of risk off. You know, maybe the market comes in next week, this week, and says, you know, we've had a good run in stocks and risk, and it's time to take a little bit off the table. And this year again chart, maybe that's a good, you know, might be one of the better ways to express a little bout of risk off. Aussie yen is always a good one. That had a nice reversal lower day after taking out some an old important high from uh, November. And if you look at the weekly here, um, weekly still looks pretty good. But the daily, not so much. Anyhow, um, I have to hop. I got to get to the airport. I got to shut this thing down. Um, good luck trading this week. You'll hear from us on the European Open. And uh, keep following us on Twitter and liking us on Twitter and liking us on YouTube. And we will uh, we'll be staying on top of things, uh, you know, even into post-Christmas. Uh, post so all the best. Good luck. Cheers.